at Melly Mel. Man, you know the vibe, Professor Melly Mel, the hood postman. For those who don't know me, content creator, influencer, thought leader. How you doing today, Cam? Man, I'm pretty good. I really? Had a pretty good day. Man, this has been a long time coming, man. It has. It has. I've heard lots about you. You know, Good or bad? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty okay. good, man. Okay. I don't, yeah, must, if it was bad, we wouldn't be here. You must got some good resources, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Half the people like me, half the people don't. But who cares, right? Hey, hey, that's what it is, man. What do they say, that's man? That's what it comes if, down to, man. If you're having to offend some people, you're probably not doing too good. You're probably not doing too good. <laughs> but I'm glad to have you, man. So we'll, we'll get into getting to know you a little bit better. Okay. And, and get to know everything about you for the people who might not know. Uh, where'd you grow up at? I grew up in Compton, born and raised. What was your era of, of growing up in Compton? Uh, well, I was born in 1959, so 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way through. So you've seen, like, the whole transformation of Compton from, like, before gangs, before Absolutely. anything happened to, like, what it turned out to be? Absolutely. I remember when the swamps were literally the swamps. There were swamps over there, crawdad holes, catfish, um, off of... Greenleaf, there were, uh, we used to run the Greyhound out there for a rabbit. We would rab go rabbit hunting off of Greenleaf. And also there was some more like um, crawdad holes and fish ponds over that way as well. So we used to go to Dominguez Hills, which was right there, you know, riding the dirt bikes, mini bikes or whatever, what have you, you know. So all that was a, a part of that Compton. Now, well, there is that you're talking about, did they build houses in those areas or? Uh, well, yes. There's houses there, all the all the Dominguez Hills, Dominguez Hills is no longer Dominguez Hills. So yeah, there's definitely houses. And the uh, area where the water was along um, Alameda, all that's dried up and all the water as well over in the swamps, dry, all gone. Oh, okay, how'd the swamps dry up? Was it just natural or? Natural probably, and then probably due to the uh, building and people moving in and you know what I mean? It just, sometimes things just happens. And what was the environment like? The environment was middle class, you know, people was getting away, they was finding their way because at a time you couldn't even move. West Compton, black people were already there, but East Compton was, you know, you had the Jewish community over there and of course white people and maybe a few, uh, at that time they was calling themselves Chicanos. So you gotta, you know, the timelines have to fit, right? They were calling themselves Chicanos. Okay, I think that's what they, you know, they still call themselves. Yeah, but they, the back then they said it, they, you didn't hear the word Hispanic. Oh, okay. You did not hear that word. You heard Chicano. I seen somewhere you were locked up with Tookie or you ran into him at one point? Oh, yeah. I, well, Tookie used to um, take us all. We used to, um, we used to be in the Oaks Park. And um, this one particular day, he, he wanted to stroll up to, well, at this time it was called Market Basket. It was no boys market. It was Market Basket, Tom McKinn, Gallon Camp, Savons, Sears and Roebuck, Daniel's Jewelry, and a couple other stores. We would go up there and we'd go in the grocery store. We'd go in one door and we would go in there. And in my mind, I'm thinking we we getting some because we're going to go back up to the park. We already got the... Uh, the snack bar open with a grill. We're going to go back there and cook some burgers, hot dogs, whatever. Took you, we walking around. We picking up mustard, mayonnaise, pickle relish, burgers, and all this different food, right? Chips and whatever. So we would get up to the register, and we put everything right there, and Tookie just looked at the cashier. Of course, he stand up to this big old, you know, big old figure, you know, bigger than life itself. Cashier just like, <laughs> you know, didn't want no parts of it. You guys just walked out with Just everything. walked out with everything. Went out the back door. We come up past. We go to Tom McCann, knock a couple of shoes, boxes of shoes on Gallatin, do the same. We call them all the way around. We come to Savon's was the back door. So as we coming through, this had to be around about, I believe, 74, 75, right around when they start wearing the red rag. And I don't remember which year. Don't hold me to that. Uh, so there was this lady in there and, and a couple other people and a guy. So the lady happened to have a red bandana. And I went up to her. 
being my disrespectful self. And I pulled it off her head and threw it on the ground. Tookie comes over, look at me, tell me, pick that up. I picked it up. He said, now go apologize. See, we had integrity back then. We had principles. There was things, if you did something out of pocket, you was checked. Not tomorrow, not a week later. You was checked on the spot. And he checked me. Uh, what people will refer as a DP, a discipline, but not a physical discipline, but he explained to me what I did wrong, and he explained to me why I shouldn't have done it, and then he explained to me why I should never do it again. And I gave it back, I apologized to the lady. I felt really bad about it after I knew, I realized I had done something wrong, because you don't know what's going to happen. This is Tookie, you know. I got my homie Guy Walker, though, said, man, uh, Tookie slapped him one day. And Kevin Mack asked him, what you do about it? He said, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was one of them times, you know what I mean? But, yeah, Tookie, you know. Man, matter of fact, shout out to Kevin Mack. Shout out to, you shout know. Shout out to Kevin Mack, man. He does some really good work. Man, the way I got onto this was through Kevin Mack. So if you look at the timeline, there's Alex Alonzo, Kev Mack. But how I got in was through Kev Mack. And, and I think he does a really wonderful job. And, you know, he brought me in and I learned what to do. Yeah, that's and, and then at the same time, I really enjoy it. Because when I was younger, I would be in L.A., whether I'd be over in the Villains or downtown or anywhere or in the Pebbles. I would always read the graffiti. The graffiti would let me know where I was at. Okay, that's it. Oh, that's the villains. They got, because the villains had some of the best graffiti there was during that time in the 70s. Oh, they can hit up the Hoovers. They was really good graffiti artists. You know, down by the uh, Liso Village, First Street. They were good down there. The Peblos, I named them. Yeah, so it was really, the graffiti would let you know at all times where you was at during the 70s. It would be hard for you unless you were just didn't really understand how things was coming to put, coming together and how people were moving at the time. All you had to do was read the graffiti and it let you exactly know where you was at because there was always an abundance of graffiti all in the walls, all on the sidewalk, just everywhere to let you know, hey, you in bounty hunters, or you in the villains, or you in the grandies, the grandies all the way up and down the building, the boot hill all the way across up and down, you know. Those are two uh, known. Um, grandies was a stronghold for all Compton Crips. Graffiti's not that big nowadays. No. As it was back in no. the 70s, 80s, Very, and 90s. very, very vital in the 70s because everybody wanted to know, wanted you to know where you was at. You know, they wanted you to know, so you wouldn't make no, you couldn't, you had no excuse. You didn't know, well, no, you know, it's right there. You're looking right. at it. All through the 20s, all through the bottoms, graffiti just everywhere. 